Here on the Illinois River, about 30 miles south of Chicago, is ground zero of the latest invasive species debate, whether or not to spend untold billions of dollars separating the Great Lakes from the Mississippi River Basin. We're approaching the electric barriers that have been in place since 2002. Dell Wilkins operates a barge business on the Illinois. The fish barriers are working and that the controls weren't being adequate at this far and doing their function to stop the advancement of invasive species, not only from the inland waterways coming into the Great Lakes environment, but also from the Great Lakes environment going into the inland waterways. Frankly, having that technology in place doesn't make me sleep better at night. It's a good interim solution. It does a good job of repelling fish, but we're, we need something in the Great Lakes that we can bank on for generations to come. And I'm banking on the separation of the Great Lakes from the Mississippi River. Debate over building a physical barrier which would interrupt commercial barge traffic started mainly because of this. Asian carp, the frenetic flying poster fish for all invasive species on a seeming quest to scare anyone who encounters them out of their wits, if not their boats. They're a real danger. These are big fish. These are, are uh, oftentimes 60 pound fish and there have been some, some scary and unfortunate instances where they've hit people, uh, broken bones, knocked people unconscious. As dangerous and scary as Asian carp can be above the water surface, they're even more devastating beneath it. Underneath the water, Asian carp are great at eating. They can scoop up to 20% of their body weight out of the water per day, and what they do is they eat right at the base of the food web. It's the fear of Asian carp's next destination that has galvanized advocates for separation. They're swimming north towards the Great Lakes through the Mississippi River, the Illinois River, and they're coming very close to us here in Chicago. And it is in Chicago where the proponents of separation would like this fish story to take a sharp turn, literally at the convergence of the Great Lakes and the Mississippi River. It used to be that water flowed from the Chicago area into Lake Michigan. At around the turn of the 20th century, around 1900, the water was reversed so that now Lake Michigan drains into the Chicago River down to the Mississippi. At the time, the reversal of the Chicago River, still considered one of the greatest engineering feats in American history, was necessary for a very good reason. To protect the drinking water supply for the city of Chicago. It used to be that their waste was all flushed into Lake Michigan. Well, they wanted to separate their waste from their drinking water for obvious health reasons. And, um, and so the river was reversed. So now you've got this free-flowing canal between the Great Lakes and the Mississippi River. Great for getting rid of Chicago's waste, great for transportation in the 19th century, but it's also opened up this highway for Asian carp to move up the Illinois River toward Lake Michigan. So the idea is to build a permanent barrier to separate, to restore the natural divide, the natural watershed divide that existed uh, prior to the 1900s. For its advocates, the barrier would not only solve the invasive species problem, but also provide an opportunity to focus on improving the Chicago waterway itself. It is not a modern waterway. It is not a modern transportation system. What we're talking about with this idea of a physical barrier is rethinking Chicago's waterway, modernizing it. Increased property values, clean water, better recreation, more people on the river, and yes, grow commercial transportation in a way that makes sense for Illinois and Chicago. We always need people who want to look forward and um, there's absolutely no reason for us not to do so. Kay Nelson represents an array of industries in the state of Indiana and has been engaged in Great Lakes issues for over 30 years. My concern is that I've expressed multiple times in settings is that the general public has the impression that this is the fast fix to prevent the Asian carp from migrating into the Great Lakes. And it's not something that's going to happen within the next 18 to 24 months. And other critical factors need to be considered before any barrier can become a reality, such as now dumping the treated wastewater and the combined sewer overflow discharges back into Lake Michigan, where Chicago residents get their drinking water. Meanwhile, Dell Wilkins and thousands of others who work along the Chicago waterway are focused on making a living right now. If we shut down locks or we separate a system, you know, we're forced to have to, to shut down our, our operations. Because if we shut down our operations, I mean, we, we're putting people out of work and we're losing jobs. We move coal, petroleum products, 
chemical industry products, road salt, ice control salt, sand, gravels, cement, steel, and steel byproducts. And right now we're moving upwards of 25 to 30 million tons annually within the greater Chicago land area. There's $16 billion worth of product that go through the waterway system. Mark Beal represents the chemical industry in Illinois and is also chairman of Unlock Our Jobs, a group focused on keeping the Chicago waterway system open. The folks who depend on the waterway system don't want the Asian carp in the Great Lakes. I mean, that's the last thing in the world we want. We want to be part of the solution. Um, what we have said is we think there's a lot of ways to solve this issue short of separating the, the, the waterway system so that it, you, know, you, you, you cause, cause economic harm to those folks that depend on it.